I'm William Bursma, one of the pastors of Third Christian Reformed Church, and the program is Markings. Our subject today is the most recent encyclical of the Roman Catholic Church issued by Pope John Paul. And I have with me today two good friends who are going to help in the discussion of that recent letter. And Jim, would you introduce yourself and tell us what you do and where you're from? Sure. I'm Jim Wilson Garrison, the Lutheran campus pastor at uh, Western Michigan University. And Rudy? My name is Rudolf Siebert, and I'm professor for religion and society in the religion department at Western Michigan University. The subject we're going to be talking about is the uh, encyclical called On Social Concern. And I've had an opportunity to read it, and you all have too. And uh, my first impression is that it is uh, somewhat uh, foggy, nebulous, and it very obviously is a translation. It doesn't read very smoothly. Uh, uh, is that a fair impression? Well, I think there are always uh, um, problems of language, of course, and uh, on which level? Of course, it is translated into English. It is mm -hmm. supposed to be English. Um, it was translated from the Latin and so on. Mm -hmm. But there's also there's a certain style in which uh, Rome speaks and so on. And it, is, um, it may sometimes sound a little bit foreign to us. So mm -hmm. uh, translation is a great art. Mm -hmm. Um, most Protestants would say, if we're going to issue uh, some sort of statement, we're going to root that very clearly in, in the Bible, and we'd have all kinds of biblical references. Mm -hmm. I do notice that there are some here, but uh, Jim, uh, does that strike you as being a kind of a lacunae here, something missing? Yes, yes, I noticed that right away. I was going to ask Rudy about that. Uh, the Pope mm -hmm. seems to use very few scripture references. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, only in the very middle of it does he refer to that. And it occurred to me that, uh, that uh, he may speak uh, as scripture himself. Is he one who continues the scriptural tradition? Is that a, a view of Catholic? Uh, well, dogma? it is, of course, it is based, you know, on, uh, on the Gospels. It is based on, on the Decalogue, of course. It is based on the Sermon on the Mount and so on. And, and they are quoted. But it is also, at the same time, a natural law uh, philosophy, of course. Mm -hmm. So Catholicism has a long a tradition to interpret the Decalogue and the Sermon on the Mount in terms of this uh, natural law tradition, which is originally Stoic, but which was uh, uh, baptized in mm -hmm. a certain sense. Uh, Rudy, I would say that um, very frequently, people who are standing outside of the Christian tradition fault both Catholics and Protestants on this ground, they say, you people of the church, you Christians, almost automatically line up with the powerful, the people who are in the seats of authority, and you have very little compassion for the poor and the oppressed. This document, at least ostensibly, says that the church must have a concern for the poor and the oppressed. Now, who is right? Um, is the critic right when he says that historically, <coughs> both Protestants and Catholics have been on the side of the rich and the powerful? Well, like in so many things, uh, both are right. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there is a long tradition, of course, of the Roman Catholic Church, and I think other churches too, to be on the side of, uh, of the powerful and the rich. I mean, on the slaveholder side, on the feudal lord side, and on the capitalistic side as well. Uh, but I think under the um, influence of the liberation theology, the basic Christian community, and so on, the uh, bishops in Latin America, uh, the preferential option of the poor uh, has been entered into these encyclicals. Uh, I think from the very beginning, from Leo XIII on, 1891, and that's how old this tradition is now, um, there is a certain inclination to, uh, to move more and more to the poor. And in the last 20 years, since the uh, um, encyclical was written, Progressio Populorum, this celebrates uh, Paul VI encyclical, mm -hmm. This is very strong, this, uh, mm -hmm. to go to the side of the poor, but not to pin the poor against the rich, as uh, Vice President Bush uh, said yesterday, that all philosophies who talk about class difference uh, are, are not un-American, and certainly mm -hmm. against the philosophy of free enterprise mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. It is the, uh, to identify with the poor, but not to pin the poor against the rich in terms of uh, class struggle. Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed, though, Rudy, when the Pope went to visit Central America, and he went to Nicaragua. And he went immediately to the bishop there. Of course, I could understand that he'd go to the bishop. But I don't think he ever went to any of the base communities. Uh, the, the rest of the church, in fact, the majority of the church in Nicaragua, for instance, is actively worshiping without the umbrella of the, yeah. of the bishop. And well, yes. it seems like the pope is going against, he's acting, behaving in a way that goes against what he's saying here about option for the poor. Well, there we have this great problem of theory and praxis and oh. how one comes from one to the other. And mm -hmm. this is also... Uh, 
part of our original sin, in a certain sense. <laughs> but uh, we have to become more specific. It is true uh, that the Pope, I think, is serious about the preferential option for the poor. <clears throat> but he does behave differently when he is in Poland and in Nicaragua. Hmm. And that he goes to Abando, who is paid by the CIA, and so on, is very disappointing, of course. And there, there was, of course, when he was there, and there were disturbances during his mass, there was a great... Uh, misunderstanding too. Uh, the, uh, the disturbances came from women who carried signs for their children who had been murdered by the Contras a few days ago. The Pope had, uh, had a fixed uh, letter which of course the bishops always make for him. So he had a text by Obando and so on and he read it and he never referred to the suffering immediately of these mothers and so on. And so there was nothing the Sandinistas did not interfere or what. It was simply that they did not think he spoke to them directly, and that's where the disturbance mm -hmm. came from. So you, you see right in that sense. First of all, there is this uh, lamentable uh, um, difference between theory and praxis. Christianity means dialectics between theory and praxis. The truth will make you free if you do it. So it has to be done, otherwise it will not liberate. And the Marxists took that over, the dialectics of theory mm -hmm. and praxis and so on. So, um, and therefore, I, I think he is, uh, he is honest about this uh, mm -hmm. uh, issue, but he has also another vision, you know, of a, of a, a church centered again in Rome. Uh, all these churches are periphery. He has this idea of a united Europe, Western and Eastern Europe, you know, all Catholic again, hopefully, or at least united Christian and so on. And so from this perspective, you know, Nicaragua and, and the liberation theology and so on may all a little bit be on, on, on the side, you know, on, at the periphery, in mm -hmm. a certain sense. So, that's true. I mean, you see something there. Yeah. Uh, Jim, before yeah. we get into the specifics on the letter itself, uh, I noticed one thing, and that is that it is addressed both to the church herself mm. and to all people of goodwill. Yeah. Now, as a typical Protestant, do you feel that the Pope can uh, speak for you, uh, and do you hear him and say, well, okay, I want to give some, uh, some sensitive attention to what this particular letter says? No, I don't think the Pope speaks for me, but I, uh, with this particular letter, mm -hmm. I was glad for his reflections and, mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, th I think I, I don't know whether all Protestants are this way, but uh, we put forth our statements in conventions and sort of vote on them by a democratic vote. And um, uh, we make those statements, but uh, uh, sometimes we don't get as elaborate. It seems like the Pope has more time to spend on these things <laughs> and uh, develop yeah, well, them. That, that reminds me, I was going to ask you, Rudy, uh, I'm assuming that just as most uh, presidential candidates don't actually write word for word their speeches, I'm assuming that the Pope doesn't sit in, the, in an no. office somewhere and sit at a typewriter or even dictate to one person no. the entire letter. This must be the no. product of a committee, is that correct? Well, the Jesuits write them or the Dominican sometimes. Mm -hmm. So Oswald von Neil Bruyning in Frankfurt, for instance, uh, wrote Quattragesimo Anno, practically. And so um, you have people, and uh, of, of course circles of people too, you know. Mm -hmm. Like in Nicaragua, you have 70 Jesuits, you know, who are consultants of the mm -hmm. government. So, mm -hmm. so he has a whole staff who writes mm -hmm. it, but then he, uh, he signs it, and mm -hmm. he looks it through, and he makes mm -hmm. changes. So it is yeah. his product. And, and, and this becomes that. the official position of the church. Yes. The moment he says, That's this right. is But this it's is not infallible letter. now, uh, in terms okay. of the uh, dogma right. of okay. infallibility. That means yeah. it is changeable. Mm -hmm. uh, it, could be, it could be corrected. Some things, I mean, by the Catholic understanding, you know, of dogma as the highest mm -hmm. level of certainty, mm -hmm. it does not have that rank. Mm -hmm. It has a rank of certitude which obligates the believer, but not in an absolute sense, so that one can, that the uh, believer can be a good Catholic and at the same time could contradict this mm -hmm. and say there are mistakes. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed that, yes, my impression, or I think many people's impression of the Holy Father is that when he speaks ex cathedra, that means that that's the word of God practically yeah. for the people and that they should obey it or follow it. And, uh, and yet, even in that, uh, uh, I noticed in the statement uh, the mess that in our social concern, in our life in the church, and in our thinking about our lives in the world, we have the necessity of adaption. And I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. The change, the possibility of change. Yeah, yeah. right. There. Yeah. Yeah. Even and from one circuit to the other, you can see this change because this is uh, uh, the declaration of a disappointment of the, uh, of the Pope because uh, since uh, Progressu Populorum by Paul VI in these 20 years, um, development has not taken place. In a certain sense, it is a sad and circular. I mean, in that sense, uh, not, uh, I mean, sad in the sense that it expresses a certain sadness that there were so, such great hopes 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, he concentrates, of course, on the South-North conflict. So there was no development in the South. 
and there was less than development. There was mm -hmm. backward development. Mm -hmm. So then he concentrates on the north. The, this encyclical is uh, directed to the north, that means to us, to help the misery in the south. And so on. The last uh, encyclical, the labor encyclical, Labor Exerzens, which he wrote, uh, the previous one, that was directed toward uh, the, the, uh, the north and made an analysis of the oppressive, oppressive capitalistic conditions in the north. This one now concentrates on the south and asks us to help. And the north is again split up into the east and the west, and then comes the east and the west block, and this horrifying uh, logic of the block, as he calls this. Mm -hmm. These are new ideas now, mm -hmm. and um, of course, uh, yes, they, they do adapt. And this is one of the, uh, one of the great uh, um, issues that they can, from one letter to the other, see what has happened in history. Mm -hmm. If uh, something has been achieved in there, there's nothing achieved, so they follow it up in a certain mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. which I think is a great advantage of this type of teaching, social teaching. Jim, I noticed that one of the things that the Pope stresses in this is the uh, duty of solidarity with uh, humanity, with the concerns for the oppressed and the, uh, the poor. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, something that Protestants would agree with uh, very mm -hmm. strongly, that uh, no man is an island, in the words of John Donne. And uh, I think that that's one of the emphases which we would say is indeed true, that we, we must, as Christians, whether we be Catholic or Protestant, we have to feel a sense of responsibility for the world. Now, I'd like to ask you, Rudy, on the, on the very question that you uh, mentioned about the division of the world, mm -hmm. we, we often think in terms of east and west, those mm -hmm. two blocks, yeah. far less of north and south. Mm -hmm. But now let me give you a typically Protestant question. Why is it that the south, which is overwhelmingly Roman Catholic, is so far behind the north. Mm -hmm. Is there something in Catholicism that does this? <laughs> yeah. That's a typical Protestant I mean, question, no, but yeah, I, I mean, ask it to a, you. It's a good question in that yeah. sense. You will see in general that capitalism developed much better in Protestant countries. Mm -hmm. uh, look at Spain, look at Italy, and compare it with right. Great Britain and right. so on. I mean, that is one thing. Uh, obviously, the communitarian values of Catholicism, you know, are somewhat at odds to the, uh, with the individualistic values, which are in Protestantism, and they go somewhat better along with the individualistic uh, values of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, free enterprise system. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, something. But then, of course, you know, there, there are other issues. Namely, I mean, Kellogg and Abjan go to uh, Central America or to Mexico, and, and of course, for, for cheap labor. And that means for, um, uh, for um, um, su surplus value, um, that means for profit. And uh, if you keep, of course, the salaries for many, many decades and even centuries uh, very low, of course, then these people cannot have uh, primitive capital accumulation. You see, that is the, because uh, whatever they work beyond their consumption flows outside of the country. I mean, before Allende, we took four times or five times our investment out of Chile and so on. So, and if you do that for a long time, then you have the situation which you have. So, there is a cultural issue involved there, this is right, and there's at the same time also, of course, an economic issue involved, why they are, why they don't develop mm -hmm. so well. Okay, I think that answers that question. Yeah. Jim, uh, the Pope in his letter talks about a kind of a pessimism that 20 years ago things were better, but it seems to me that approximately 20 years ago we were talking about the findings of the Club of Rome, mm -hmm. which is very, very pessimistic. And uh, do you think that uh, historically that the situation is worse today? Are there more, say, third and fourth world countries? He, he makes reference to that here, that uh, there are the, the, the prosperous countries and then the third world and even the fourth world. Do you think the situation is actually worse than it was? Yeah, it seems to be. Mm -hmm. And that even the development, the Green Revolution, brought on uh, a lot of goods and services and all that, but mm -hmm. it mostly generated uh, wealth for the wealthier and all that. Right. And the strange thing that's developing now is more uh, more poverty, even in wealthy countries, in moderately wealthy countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. A million children are underfed here in this mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. and uh, sleeping on the streets. Mm -hmm. People, uh, so it's incredible. Yeah. Well, Jim, I mean, that's okay. what he's disappointed about. You mm -hmm. see, we have to specify what he's disappointed about. The Club of Rome is the, the limit, limit of resources and so mm -hmm. But he specifically, uh, he thought, you know, that the poor, first of all, of uh, the Southern Hemisphere um, would do maybe more for themselves. But then there was also a hope for a new spirit, you know, concentrate in the UN, and that this combination would bring about more economic, political, and cultural development. Mm -hmm. and, and this has not happened. The gap has widened between the uh, South right. and the North yeah. and yeah. between the... Uh, uh, upper classes, the rich class, and the poor class mm -hmm. in this country. See, mm -hmm. I mean, Bush said uh, recently, he said, well, uh, you know, what Dukaku says, that is against our philosophy. Uh, there must be losers and there must be winners, you know, otherwise we are all losers. What he forgets, of course, is that it is like in, in a lottery, you know, that means that the millions <laughs> of uh, losers pay for the few. Uh,
as you know. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, this is not the philosophy of this encyclical. I mean, these two philosophies, Bush mm -hmm. philosophy and mm -hmm. this one, are at mm -hmm. odds with mm -hmm. each other, without mm -hmm. doubt. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you another question as, as a Catholic. Uh, um, I agree wholeheartedly with the Roman Catholic position on abortion as a Christian foreign minister. But I am very much concerned about the fact that the Pope has this adamant opposition to birth control. And it seems to me that, that one, of the, uh, one of the great problems of our world is the, the uh, high birth rate in the uh, third and fourth world. Why doesn't the Pope uh, acknowledge that birth control as such is not wrong? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, we are a Malthusian country, of course. That means uh, yeah. uh, there are two different ways how overpopulation uh, could, be, could be settled. One is the Malthusian way, that means to restrain by whatever pills and so on. The other one is uh, which the Pope shares with the Marxist, you know, that one changes systems. That means, mm. uh, you know, there are two, uh, one can approach it from two ends. Mm. Um, now you know that uh, even China and so on, you know, and Russia have become unfaithful to their socialistic uh, plan that means by transformation of the system to solve the thing you know that the proletariat the proles uh, it's a latin word for children that means mm -hmm. the proletariat are those who produce children all the time that means the poorer people are the more children they sometimes mm -hmm. have that's true now if you uh, uh, because you know like whoever is on the food chain on the lowest level has to reproduce most massively in uh, in, in detroit you have uh, blacks who have a life expectancy of 46 years you know well, the whites have uh, one of six, 76 years. So the more your life is endangered, the more you reproduce or so. So if there would be a systemic type of a, of a transformation, you know, in, in terms of a taught a more classless situation and so on, that could be changed. That was Marx's idea against Malthus, you know. So um, therefore, uh, the, these encyclicals, I don't say that the Pope is uh, necessarily right on, on these natural I was just going to say, would you system. welcome him, uh, a statement from the Pope saying that birth control is not a sin? Uh, would you well, welcome that personally as a Catholic? He couldn't say that if he stays in his tradition. No, he I would know. have to go. No. Uh, it is always the question though, in, in, in churches how far you can go without losing your identity. In a certain sense, he is bound by his type of uh, natural law um, uh, considerations you know, to take that position. But what I would not like him to lose is the edge in terms of system change, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I do not think, you know, that this uh, problem of the overpopulation of the South, which he talks about, you know, that this uh, can simply be, be settled by birth control. Mm -hmm. And then we can uh, leave, you know, the, the tremendous amount of pressing out of surplus value in the South by the North, you know. Uh, it seems to me that this may be a, a problem, you know, which is greater than the other one. Okay. Yeah, I like the notion that, uh, the, that it's a matter, the Pope, I think, says it's a matter of distribution, that we have to distribute from the wealthier nations, from the North to the Southern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone a long time ago, not the Pope, but uh, someone has a judge that here in the United States, every baby born takes ten times the amount of resources and goods throughout mm -hmm. its life as one child in another country, in a third world, fourth world country. So that um, that's the unfairness of the distribution and the use yeah. of wealth. And in our current society, Jim, I think one of the problems, too, is the uh, prevalence of TV. The poorest home has TV, <laughs> and these kids are exposed to all of the commercials in which uh, various products are being hustled. And they obviously must feel, I wish I had that. And now we're getting this worldwide uh, with satellites mm -hmm. that uh, the, the poor people are, are seeing that there are, there's that small minority of the rich who have so much. And that's got to be a very depressing thing for them. And it seems to me that even there, there's a, a Christian witness that ought to be made yeah. that our, our, our emphasis on consumer goods and our, on our materialism, that that's a pretty poor Christian witness. And I sense a little bit of that in in the yeah. Pope's letter, that he is yeah. rebuking us for yeah. that. But we should not have a phony solution now by simply making, you know, advertisement more specific, class specific or something like mm -hmm. that. Because, I mean, there are people, you know, who live under all uh, possible subsistence standards whatsoever. So I think something has to be changed in reality as well, mm -hmm. not only, you know, in the yeah. form of advertisement yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, do you feel that this uh, uh, letter is a subtle attack on capitalism? Yeah, just thinking about that, that uh, he, he, also, he says that uh, it's, he's against uh, the Marxist uh, collectivism or is indifferent to it and as well as the liberal capitalism and mm -hmm. doesn't fall on one side or the other, but a couple specific places indicates that uh, capitalism has cheated. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Catholicism, you know, moves from the very start, from 1891 on, between the two lines. 
<coughs> he calls one side liberal capitalism, which sums up the whole history of capitalism, and on the other side, Marxist collectivism. Um, what that now means is that he does not want to go to the Marxist side, which would mean the uh, transformation into collective appropriation of collective surplus value. That is the definition of socialism. The definition of capitalism is the private appropriation of collective surplus labor and so on. Now he would, uh, he does allow, he talks about the spirit of initiative and so on, so he does allow the upper classes to keep the surplus value which they press out of the masses and that is the essence of capitalism. Um, but he would say only so long as the poverty is not massive, at that point, the state could uh, uh, nationalize, you know, certain mm -hmm. industries, Montana Union in Europe, mm -hmm. and so on, in order to secure the common good. That means that mm -hmm. not people like here, you know, the people uh, homeless around the railroad station, the prostitutes around Hilton, and mm -hmm. then all the insane people mm -hmm. all over town. And so on. that is obviously not a normal situation. In this case, the um, the uh, public or the the state uh, could intervene. That means the difference between the Pope and uh, and and Bush is that Bush thinks that uh, the private appropriation of collective surplus value is absolute. The Pope thinks it's relative. Relative to what? To the common good. If the common good requires it, then this right of profit could be limited. Or the right of ownership of means of production as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's between absolute and relative. Yeah. We, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, and he also talks about the, the danger of not giving worth to every human being, which perhaps is a, a, slight, a slight slant against the, the communist collective notion mm -hmm. and uh, the worth of people to, uh, mm -hmm. to live their lives and, and, and celebrate the full thing, not just economics yeah. and uh, gaining wealth and accumulation, but also the political participation and, and the uh, way of spiritual and religious right. mm -hmm. participation. But again, the thing that strikes me is that the letter is really very, very um, horizontal. The vertical element is seldom stressed. And at that point, I think many Protestants would say, well, if we were to issue a, a, a statement on the social uh, crisis of our times, we would be calling people to conversion, to Christ, and to follow his example, and to learn to share with one another, to have compassion, and to be a leaven in society. Mm -hmm. And I don't get that feeling. It's, it's almost as if this is one big business addressing another big business. Mm -hmm. And that the, the element of the specific Christian faith is very vague and obscure. Mm -hmm. Now, you as a Catholic uh, probably could respond to that. It, it, where is the, uh, the head of the church? The, uh, the Pope is speaking as Vicar of Christ, but I really don't hear the call to uh, repentance of, for greed and selfishness mm -hmm. and a call to uh, sacrifice and charity. I just don't hear that in here. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you know, he would not agree, you know, that greed is good, as we heard in the last seven years. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it is, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it is of course, uh, you know, he follows, of course, the Sermon on the Mount. The question of the encyclical is how you translate this, you know, yeah. into the reality. Mm -hmm. So you have to say something about the conflicts and all these worldly things in a certain mm -hmm. sense, you know. If you keep it only... Uh, religious or theological, there's very theological in, in some parts, you know, more than the other encyclicals, but then there's the danger that you, uh, you know, collect uh, uh, food or clothing, you know, in the church and then you give it to people. That means you transform, for instance, uh, uh, justice which is not given into charity and thereby you pervert charity that nobody wants to be on charity. The highest Christian value is perverted, you know, if, if the social justice which is demanded is not given or so. So it is, it is a question of how, uh, because Niebuhr did it too in, in Detroit, you know, mm -hmm. how uh, love can be transformed mm -hmm. into justice and then into real laws and real transformation and so on. Well, and the other thing is we think, uh, you know, your question about uh, the conversion and all that, we think yeah. of it in individual terms right, yeah. and the personalistic terms. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think the Pope has here what we all need is this awareness of the, mm -hmm. not just sin, but the, mm -hmm. as he called it, the structures of sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are right. massive structures yeah. that yeah. work against individuals and yeah. groups of people. And there's a clear-cut call here to uh, the aware uh, acknowledgement and awareness that this is basically one world and mm. that you cannot have these separated yeah. nations and the, the solidarity the thing comes through yeah. over and over yeah. again. And I, right, yeah. I welcome that. Uh, and solidarity, of course, you know, is nothing else than a translation of the Christian uh, idea of, of mm -hmm. love. You see, the Marxists translated love into solidarity, and now the church reappropriates it again. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting there are two forms of solidarity. One is a preferential solidarity, where you uh, identify with the poor and only with the poor and not with the rich. And there is a more wider solidarity, more lenient one, which includes the rich classes as well. 
-hmm. And we have a mixture of this, you know. Uh, very often it is this preferential one, you know. We have to identify with those oppressed in the South. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it opens up and says, you know, the rich, uh, what do we do with them? You know, they have not much of a chance to go into the kingdom. So mm -hmm. how can they, uh, how can we do something? And the liberation theologians, of course, would say the best way how the rich can be redeemed is by uh, liberating the poor because mm -hmm. then the rich stop to uh, exploit them and that is their chance to go to heaven, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that the, uh, the notion of interdependence, uh, the Pope says that uh, while we need to be uh, aware of all peoples throughout the world and the common good, uh, very often when we get interdependent, that means that the weakest are the ones that are, it's disastrous for them. Yeah. Because apparently we come in with our strength or our money and uh, we choose to take out more than we put in and mm -hmm. there's not real interdependence or it's yeah. dependence, interdependence mm -hmm. for the benefit of some yeah. folks. Mm -hmm. so that has led to this horrible indebtedness, you know, and though the question, the concrete question for action would be, for instance, forgiving, is there a possibility of forgiving? I mean, mm. uh, Yugoslavia is in bad shape, Algeria is in bad shape, Mexico, you see, and so on. If they are not forgiven part of their, of their debts and so on, you know, we will have uh, the most miserable mm -hmm. social upheavals. And now we're also one of the chief debtor nations. And somebody was commenting on the fact that we're sucking up all this, uh, these loans. For so that, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. our military. Yeah. And yeah. there isn't money for loans even yeah. for the small yeah. countries that do yeah. what they want. Well, it's, it's very obvious that the Pope is addressing here one of the major concerns of our world. And our, our, the whole fabric of, of civilization really depends upon whether we solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're certainly living in a, in a time when, theoretically, even a small nation can destroy a very large one with the yeah. proliferation yeah. of nuclear weapons. I'm, I'm really convinced that particularly the fate of our nation, the United States, you know, depends on how we settle this South-North mm -hmm. conflict, mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. If we do it the contra, More than the East -West contra even. way, if we do the East, the contra way, or the, mm -hmm. no, I mean, first of all, for us, you know, because there's another block on the other side, you know, of course, but mm -hmm. for us, more, more immediately, I think, mm -hmm. it is important how we deal with Cuba, how we deal with Nicaragua and so on. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we are able, you know, instead of uh, simply supporting the United Food Company, you know, and, and press uh, surplus value out, you know, 35 cents an hour and all this, or if we can make a contract with these nations, can let themselves determine themselves and then make a contractual thing, they would let the United Food Company in, but not, you know, for paying 35 mm -hmm. cents and letting people yeah. starve that the children cannot uh, grow up and, and their, or their brains are damaged for the rest of their life mm -hmm. and the, this cannot go on, you see. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, for who we are, our own identity has something to do with uh, mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. with the South. I mean, with our right. South here. Right. Yeah, well, let, me just, mm -hmm. let me just make one more comment that's yeah. a little bit maybe, uh, might even be a bit unfair. Uh, but I'll include myself. I live in a very fine home. Mm -hmm. you, you have a nice place, too. I don't know where yeah. you live. Uh, I, I have a hunch that the Pope has fairly comfortable quarters. <coughs> uh, is there a problem with the affluence uh, in which we live as Christians in the West? And I begin with the Pope, and I conclude with you and with me. Is that a problem? Should we be doing something about that? Or do you have any guilt feelings? Or may we live at this level that we do? Uh, I think a deficiency, you know, of the encyclical is that it has no real action program no, right. as such, you know. Specific. Uh, obviously, this encyclical has to be applied to the Roman Catholic Church, first of all. If he criticized the authoritarianism and totalitarianism in Eastern countries and so on, uh, and says, you know, the spirit of initiative, you know, the spirit of initiative in Roman Catholicism suffers quite a lot. Mm -hmm. and so, so we certainly have to clean out our own house, first of all. Right. Uh, what we can do here in this area, for instance, is many of our industries are militarily connected. You know, water, water lift, you know, produces the hydraulic systems for airplanes in, in El Salvador, bombing there and so on. So we have to ask how can we have, for instance, more peaceful industry here, more peaceful employment and so on. So this would be action which mm -hmm. one could take from right. this. With your house, I don't think you don't mm -hmm. have you don't have to have to worry. I think. All right. My thanks to both of you. Our time is about up. Uh, Jim, it's been a pleasure. This is the first time you've been on our program, yes. and I really appreciated that. And Rudy, I hope to see you again in a yes. subsequent uh, program. Okay. And friends, we hope you'll join us again next week when we'll be discussing something else on markings. Mm -hmm.